Chef Engineer with the Gem Flow Meter. Um, today, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to wire up the Gem Flow Meter to external power, as well as to any telemetry devices that you might have. What you'll need is a Gem Series meter, as well as an optional data cable. First, let's talk about simply wiring the meter to an external power source. There are two key benefits for always powering your mag meter through an external source. First is, while the GEM is equipped with a large 95,000 milliamp hour battery pack, wiring to external power enables the meter to run continuously without ever needing battery replacement, lowering the lifetime cost of ownership. Secondly, external power enables the GEM to output a range of signals that can be used for monitoring and reporting flows over telemetry. Uh, these are pulse frequency, 4 to 20 milliamp, and Modbus via RS-485. The GEM requires the following for external power. Uh, the source must be between 12 and 32 volts, but can be AC or DC. The exception to this is if you're planning on using the 4 to 20 milliamp output. In this case, the voltage must be 24 volts or higher. External power can be found through a variety of sources in the field. For example, a pump panel or DFD, a sprinkler system controller, a wide variety of PLCs in general, a telemetry device which supplies power, or even a small solar power unit. Finally, if you do not immediately have the correct voltage, a wide range of adapters are commercially available for purchase. Now I will demonstrate the wiring of the GEM to external uh, power. Here at the office, we have a laboratory power supply which we will be supplying voltage at 24 volts DC. The standard GEM cable is a 8 core serial cable. There is a small notch in the connector that means it can only connect to the I.O. port in the correct way. The first step is to locate the I.O. port on the back of the GEM meter. There's a small threaded cap that you'll have to unthread. And then you can take the data cable and you locate the, the recess for the notch, line those two up, and then thread it down. The next step is to locate the uh, power cables on the other side. Um, each one of these cables has a small label on it. In this case, we're looking for PWR plus and PWR minus. These are our power cables. And then we'll go ahead and connect it to the positive and negative uh, external power supply. And then we can go ahead and turn the power supply on. We're at 24 volts DC. So first, when the meter is not on external power, you'll see a small battery symbol up in the corner. When external power is supplied, the battery symbol will change to a plug. That's how you know that everything is connected. In recent years, Two major trends have emerged which have impacted the groundwater industry. The first is an increased awareness of the scarcity of water resources, leading many state and local regulators to require the reporting of groundwater usage. The second is the general proliferation of the IoT, or Internet of Things, devices in all aspects of life. Together, these have led to an increased adoption of telemetry devices for real-time wireless flow monitoring. The GEM meter, using its pulse frequency, 4 to 20 milliamp, or Modbus outputs, can be connected to almost any third-party telemetry device. For example, Glowtech provides a simple two-channel monitoring and control device called the Centralink. When connected to the GEM meter, the central link will report flow readings in real time over cellular, which then allows the user to monitor the flow using any PC or smartphone device. Another example of a device is called Vapor, manufactured by a company called AMI. 
Today, we will demonstrate how we can hook the gem up to the vapor to monitor flow data. Here is a vapor device, which you can see has a cellular antenna. Typically, this is installed inside a pump or drive pan. First, we need to make sure that both the telemetry device and the gem meter are receiving external power. In this case, the gem meter is already connected to our power supply from the previous step, so we only need to connect the vapor to the power supply. Next, we will connect the gem output to the vapor device. The vapor accepts all three types of outputs offered by the gem, Modbus through RS-485, pulse frequency, and 4 to 20 milliamp. Typically, you will only need to wire a single output. However, for demonstration purposes, I will show you all three options. First, we hook up RS-485 by connecting the wires labeled RS-485A and B on the gem cable to the terminals labeled RS-485 plus and minus respectively on the vapor device. Next, we're connecting the pulse frequency signal. Pulse frequency is known as a type of digital output. Therefore, we take the wires from the gem cable, labeled digital plus and digital minus, and connect them to the digital in terminal block on the vapor device. In this case, the digital plus wire goes to the digital one terminal, and the digital minus wire goes to ground. This is how the AMI Vapor's digital input terminal is labeled. While other devices may be labeled slightly differently, the wiring process is overall very similar. Finally, we will connect the 4 to 20 milliamp signal, which is a type of analog signal. Therefore, we take the wires from the gem cable labeled analog plus and analog minus, and connect them to the analog in terminal block on the vapor device. In this case, the analog plus wire goes to the analog one terminal, and the analog minus wire goes to ground. At this point, we can flip on the power. As you can see, the vapor is now turned on and can begin receiving signals from the gem meter as well as sending signals out via the cellular network. After the meter is wired, you can now monitor its flow readings by logging into the AMI website. This is an example of the AMI website interface. Most telemetry device manufacturers offer both website and mobile app monitoring, often with user customizable interfaces. Here, in this example, we've wired all three outputs, and as you can see, the digital pulse frequency and the analog 4 to 20 milliamp readings are the same, as they should be. To access the Modbus RS-485 readings in this example, you have to go to the menu located above, but as you can see, Modbus provides not only the same flow information, but a range of other information about the meter as well, such as the totalizer. This, however, may require some additional setup with a telemetry vendor. Please note, the meter readings reported online may not be exactly instantaneously updated. Different telemetry devices will have different update protocols and intervals. The 4 to 20 milliamp output will usually update faster than the pulse frequency, which has to be averaged over a period of a few minutes. The RS-485 is faster than both because it is mirroring the meter's electronic display. As you can see here, we've lowered the flow reading on the gem meter, but it will take the pulse frequency output a few refreshes to catch up. Now we're going to take a look at another example of connecting the gem flow meter to another telemetry device. Uh, here we have the Centralink LT. This is a very similar device to the vapor that we already demonstrated. 
It has several different options for input and output, including analog 4 to 20 and digital pulse frequency. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the analog 4 to 20 uh, wire. The first step is to connect the Centrelink to the external power supply. As we mentioned before, the Centrelink is a two-channel telemetry device. They are labeled channel 0 and channel 1 on the main board. We can select either of these channels to connect the GEM to, using the analog positive wire on the GEM cable. Then we connect the analog minus wire to the terminal labeled COM next to the channel we decided to use. And that's it. There are two options for reading the flow values online. The first is via PC over the Alexis Connect website. Here we can log in select the specific Centrelink unit that we are using to monitor our gem meter, and it will lead us to the flow. Again, some configuration may be required when you first set up the Centrelink account. You can always contact me at Glowtech for further information and assistance. The Centrelink can also be monitored over a smartphone either using its Android or iOS app, which is called Alexis Connect, and can be found on both the Google and Apple app stores. The user interface is simple and intuitive and allows you to monitor any gem meter that is connected to a Centrelink device anytime at anywhere in the world. Thank you for watching our tutorial on connecting the GEM flow meter to telemetry. There are many options of telemetry devices out there. If you have any questions or need any assistance in pairing your GEM meter to a specific device, please feel free to contact us at any time. I look forward to hearing from you.